Hey everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of Open at Microsoft. I'm Todi and I'm here with Sajay um, and we'll talk about Oras again. So last time uh, we talked about uh, what Oras is, uh, what is the history of the Oras project and we showed a very kind of quick demo how you can use Oras to push a text file to a, a artifact registry. Uh, I was very interested in uh, container secure supply chain. Really? I uh, thought you would go for cat pictures because we spent a lot of time talking about cat <laughs> pictures. Anyway. Yeah, we spent time talking about cat right. pictures. That's true. Uh, but no, my interests lie. Uh, actually, I'm a dog person. So, All right. Yeah. Um, container secure supply chain. We talked very briefly last time about uh, S-bombs and uh, other artifacts. So one thing that is very interesting, how I can actually use Auras to uh, relate artifacts in the registry and let's say if I have a container image for example and can I push the s-bomb for this container image and somehow relay them can you show me whether I can do that with Aura? sure uh, I think it's maybe I should step back and kind of describe why uh, we went down this whole route of attaching stuff to a container image mm -hmm. um, a container by nature is immutable. We don't expect the digest of the container or the manifest digest to change. So we want to keep that uh, that artifact um, untouched in some way. So mm -hmm. the whole idea was that you still want to uh, link two things together, right? Like an S-bomb yes. or a signature, but you don't want to mutate your original artifact. And mm -hmm. so the idea is that um, as, we, as we found that Oras was able to push artifacts, how could we extend this to now link two artifacts together, right? Mm -hmm. And it's important to kind of like think about uh, supply chain as a way to store content that is related to uh, a specific image, or in some cases, even a signature of another artifact, like an S-bomb and things like that. Exactly, yeah, because if you mutate the artifacts, that will invalidate signatures, right? Right. And you constantly want to update like, uh, I'll call it the metadata for the image because things change, right? I discover vulnerabilities. Uh, maybe I want to mark the image as uh, not used anymore or not relevant. So I want to update this metadata. But as you said, I don't want to change the, the manifest or the image itself because then my signature will right. go away. And, and maybe we can, one of the things maybe from the previous episode that we did talk about was the reference type working group for OCI, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So Aura's uh, kind of like defined an artifact spec and the reference artifact of how we would attach two things. And we proposed that to the OCI group and we're very close to kind of like getting a release for OCI as well. So uh, I can jump to a demo that'll show you how you can attach yep. stuff and then let's, 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 do let's that, do, yeah. take it from there. All right, so um, for some context, um, I, I'm running a local registry here. I'm using Zot, which is uh, another project that supports uh, OCI images and uh, the reference type specification and things like that. So to, uh, let's go ahead and uh, push an image first, and then we will go ahead and attach something to it. So here, I'm gonna be using a very simple Docker file, and I'm gonna be building an OCI image tar. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is that I want to get a pure OCI image uh, because if you pull from uh, maybe Docker Hub or something like that, you might get a Docker image. So this enables us to create an image tar. So there is a difference between OCI images and Docker images. Yes, right? yes. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. The manifest and the media types are slightly different, but for all compatibility reasons, we always support Docker images and OCI images. Most of the times like ContainerD and all use that. <coughs> So here but, I'm... Uh, uh, for Auras, can I use Docker images or...? That's a fantastic question because I recently hit this problem. And I was hoping to use Docker images using Auras in, in one of my demos. And apparently the Auras team has taken a very uh, interesting view that uh, they want to be true to OCI. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so anything that Auras does is going to be supporting OCI, even though OCI is supporting backwards compatibility. So that's why I'm building an OCI image here, so mm -hmm. that you can push an OCI image using Auras directly. So here, I'm going to use Auras to copy from my local image tar, and it's going to go ahead and move that image into the local into my local registry. So you can see that I'm saying that it's, it's copying from an OCI layout, 
and I'm using the image star that I just generated and moving that to the local and uh, moving that to my local registry that I can access like any other uh, image going forward. And that, uh, so the the local registry that you're running, right? Uh, you mentioned that Zot, which right. is another open source uh, uh, project, but uh, uh, other registries, they support the same functionality, right? Uh, registries so like ACR or ECR or GCR. Yes, so most of the specification is already implemented in, uh, in these cloud registries uh, like ACR and ECR. Mm -hmm. um, Zot has gone ahead one more step and they've implemented the, the, the new, uh, the latest of the reference implementation, the reference type implementation, so it's easier to kind of like show here. But there is, uh, there's been a positive handoff or a positive statement from multiple providers that they are going to implement the new reference type to store and attach artifacts going forward. And there is uh, some backwards compatibility. I think right. Nora support that. Right? Yes, okay. so mm -hmm. we understand that not everybody is going to be on the latest and greatest specifications. Yeah, yeah. So um, we want to make sure that from the Aura's project that the older images and uh, the so-called 1.0 of the specification is also honored. Mm -hmm. okay. so, all right, so let's go get back to kind of like creating a simple artifact. Now, this artifact is nothing but a very simple text file that I am going to attach to this registry, uh, to this image that we have just built and push it to the registry, mm -hmm. all right? So here I'm specifying the image that I want, which is Hello World Latest, and the artifact type is just an example. And you can see that I push the Hello text to uh, this image, mm -hmm. and the image digest is kind of important here, right? I'm attaching it to a digest of an image, and uh, and the digest of the artifact is the one double E here, all right? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a, a question here. So uh, we talked that the image is immutable, right? And this immutability is kind of uh, uh, where the shock comes from, like the digest, right? So if you change the image, this <laughs> digest will change. Now, when you push this artifact and link it to the image, uh, the image is somehow referenced in this link, right? Correct. And that makes kind of this link uh, immutable, or is right. that correct? Yes, so Oras is doing some heavy lifting under, which is, it is looking at Hello World Latest, mm -hmm. right? It's resolving that for you to that digest. Now remember that a tag is something that the user defines, and you can move the tag to a different digest. So That's this, what I was gonna ask you, because right. if I go and retag this image, the the linked text file that you just linked will stay with the with, with the, the original image. Okay. So the okay. so as, as you can think of this as any attachments or or any of these uh, linked artifacts are going to be attached to that specific digest, and the tag okay. is a user defined concept, right? Yeah, that that's one important thing that actually it's, uh, I find important because I want to actually do all this work, have the metadata, sign everything and make sure that these things don't get tampered with. Exactly, so, right. so here it's important to notice that this is attached to this specific image digest and let's go ahead and kind of see how those attachments are viewed. So here, I am using the tag, but I can also use the digest to kind of find out exactly what the attachments are. So here you can see that um, Auras will help you discover attachments to the specific image, but it's telling me that it's linked to the specific digest, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. And this is my same uh, file that I just attached. And that's, that's kind of like making sure that the whole graph of artifacts are uh, viewable and linkable across uh, the registry. Um, that, that is cool, yeah. And, and this, is, this is kind of like where it gets more and more interesting because uh, now how do you use this in different environments. Can right? I, so here is, here is a question that I have. So can I take all this stuff and move it from your, uh, I think, Zot registry to some other registry? Yes, and maybe let's jump into the next part, which is how do you move this, right? Like uh -huh. you, now, there's a concept of copying an image or, or like maybe pulling and pushing an image, but now you want to walk through the entire link set of links or attachments and then kind of like walk, uh, copy that over. So before we get to that, I think it's important to see how these links are represented, right? Mm -hmm. So oh, let's- the, the question that I asked you about that. Right. Like so, let, so let's see how this uh, attachment or this reference artifact is created. Uh, 
Now, what you're seeing here is the manifest of that specific attachment, right? So I can see that this is my Hello World text that I have attached, mm -hmm. right? And if you pay attention to this portion, which is what we call as the subject, the subject tells me that this specific Hello World text is attached to this 1F2, which is my Hello World latest image. That's the one that you showed before. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. So the subject is how you can create new artifacts that link to other artifacts. And this is the glue that kind of sticks all this together. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you can attach more and more different types. So you can attach a signature, you can attach an S-bomb, you can attach a cat picture, so whatever you want. And, uh, if you, and the whole source along with it if you want. So different things without modifying the image. And that is very key because you're still maintaining the property of immutability across your content addressable store. Okay. I still want to see how actually I can take uh, yes. all okay. these things and move them somewhere else. Yes. Because like when we think about secure supply chain, right? And supply chain in general, you take things from one place, move them to another. Uh, show me. Okay. So what do we want to do? Let's go ahead and copy what we created, the image plus this other attachment to another repository, right? So here I'm going to use Aura's copy and I'm specifying uh, a flag called recursive, which kind of walks the chain, right? Uh, I want to call out that this is not a tree because the attachment is actually pointing to the image. The image is not pointing to the attachment. So it's yeah. kind of important mm -hmm. to kind of think about, understand how the graph looks. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we are walking down, or rather walking up the image, finding all its links, and then taking that and moving it over to another repository. So here, you can see that I will move not just the image, but also its related attachments over. And if I go to this new repository, which is called Hello World Prod, just for uh, just for uh, some change, you can see that it is moving over both my image plus the attachments along with it. Now, and if I have signatures on each one of those, if I have a signature on the image and signature on the attachment, you will also move the signatures, right? Right, and. Um, the interesting, maybe a point that we want to call out here is you can have a very large number of attachments, right? You can have yeah. a signature, you can have an S-bomb, you can have the image, the S-bomb, and the signature of that S-bomb. And you can have a, uh, have a graph of these things. And so you want clients to be able to copy this whole thing over, right? Exactly. And you yeah. want to maybe specify how much you want to copy and things like that. So there are provisions in the Aura CLI and in the library to help you like skip certain artifacts if you uh, don't you want. You can filter like, for example, what, oh, that, exactly. that, that, that's so, really so cool. So those are, those are kind of like the next level of how do you kind of deal with large number of artifacts. Aura takes, takes care of making sure you're paginating it, walking through the whole graph and things like that. So, and it has a lot of concurrency built in as well. So mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's hopefully a place where engineers have enjoyed kind of like building uh, a system that can move content across. Uh, I, I see actually a lot of applications of that. And as I said, so I'm very passionate about uh, supply chain and I see how I can use Auras in, in such scenarios. I see actually Auras growing, especially with all the push that we have right now for uh, secure software, secure supply chain. Right. I think um, just looking back uh, from the incubation of the project, it's interesting that right now uh, I was just looking at GitHub stats and it's about um, 1,300 odd GitHub repositories that's using Auras and it's growing. Mm -hmm. um, we we uh, revamped Auras from using ContainerD to a much smaller dependency set to reduce like uh, mm -hmm. CVEs and things like that that come in so that the surface area is small. That's uh, nice. So maybe let's leave it for the next episode and talk about the community and how, for example, other people can be involved there. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.